Growing your business can mean big time logistical questions, like how are we going to keep up with all these local deliveries? Let Uber Direct offer you a helping hand. With Uber Direct, you take orders on your website, app, or by phone. Then drivers who are part of Uber's courier network pick them up from your store and deliver them to your customer's doorstep. Sounds simple, right? Uber Direct helps you give your customers what they want when they want it. Offer them delivery options in under two hours, on the same day, or scheduled up to 30 days in advance. Plus, share real-time tracking and ETAs by text. You can keep growing your business at a price that works for you. Never pay commission or hidden charges. Just pay a fixed fee per delivery. Delivery just got better with Uber Direct. Learn more at uberdirect.com. Hi, babes. It's me, Tia Coffee, and welcome to a brand new episode of The Final Frontier. This is a raincoat, and this is ginger hair, and I think... Ginger Rogers was in Singing in the Rain, so I guess I'm her. Uh, on this week's episode, we have got one of my favorite people ever, Eurovision icon, singer, songwriter, and goth legend. It's Bambi Thug! So I well, this is the start of the podcast. We're starting now. This is the beginning. No intro. Um, <laughs> I will start by saying, so my nephew is nine years old. Yeah. And at the moment, he gets up in the morning and he practices singing uh, yours and Nemo's songs. Oh my God, that's so sweet. Literally, my sister told me and I was like... That's pretty fierce. And then also my sister was like, and that is exactly what I was doing at the same age, <laughs> was just practicing Eurovision songs. I love that. But that's an impact. That is. I've actually, I've had like, quite a few videos of of kids, like da- either practicing the dance or like just screaming it at the telly. <laughs> and I think it's so cute. Um, yeah, like all ages, but I think it's just particularly sweet when it's like, the kids. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God, you are going to be a goth. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I mean, my nephew also plays the recorder, so oh I'm God. not sure. Wait, I played the recorder. Hang on. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe my nephew yeah. will be a goth at some point. <laughs> recorder playing goth. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Eurovision. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm a massive like Eurovision geek. I'm a Eurovision fan. We all know this at this point. Mm-hmm. But watching the evolution of your performance from your initial selection Mm. to the final was probably one of the most iconic things that I've seen. Thank you. The way that it sort of like, like at its heart was like the same piece, but Mm. it grew and evolved with, you know, the people that you surrounded yourself with. Yeah. How did it feel sort of like watching both back and comparing? Oh, I watched the one from the national final and I'm like... It looks like, to me, in comparison, it's like a a town pantomime. (laughs) The first one. um, No, it's it's sweet. I mean, like, we definitely kept elements, as in, like, the the changing of of vibes and colors and and obviously the the witch element of it. I mean, I got rid of those creepy bunnies, obviously, in exchange for a hot demon, which was definitely an upgrade. Um, even some of the, um, I remember some of the pictures coming out from our rehearsals and mm-hmm. I was so, I was so angry because I was like, but the dress isn't even finished and they're putting out pictures of it and the hair isn't even finished and the wig isn't, I guess I was, uh, I was stressed about it at the time, but I actually think it's quite nice for people to see the evolution of it and like oh, sure. how polished it, it got by the end. And I'm, I'm super proud of that. I mean, my, Yeah. The national final, we definitely came a long way from there. <laughs> but it's nice to see. Like, I feel like I can empathize in a way because I watch clips of myself on like series two of Drag Race. Mm. And I know that I'm wearing a bowl cut right now, but like, save your comments, everyone. Um, <laughs> but like, I could see like the development. So you've always got that moment to like look back at that as like the start of like your next stage yeah, of development. Definitely. I don't know. I think even if I did, if we had another one, I would, there were things I would have. Even, you know, you can always elevate, I think. Um, I think what's nice about the Eurovision as well is like, there's so many rehearsals that then also you do get to see 
you get to watch them back. So you do get mm. to actually pick up on things and be like, right, that needs to be better. I need to hit that more. Or the, like my main thing was like, the dress needs more rhinestones. The trans flag needs more rhinestones, more rhinestones. <laughs> my hair needs rhinestones. <laughs> so that definitely, yeah, it definitely improved on its rhinestones throughout the Eurovision journey, which I am delighted with. Oh, for we sure. Have more. I, I think, was it, it was Marius, right? Yeah. Who was doing, I did offer my services as rhinestoner. They oh, were not really? accepted. <laughs> because I think they didn't want to sort of like put me out, but I was okay. literally sat in a hotel room <laughs> doing nothing. So You're I was like, like I'll come rhinestone. That's fine. Yeah. Um, the thing, like, I feel like people don't know the ins and outs of like how stuff works at Eurovision and how like intense and serious mm. it is. Because like, I was... I was filming something like in the arena at one point. This was this year. Mama, Lorene turned up for rehearsals. I was yelled at. I was told to leave. I was like, but this isn't my mm-hmm. fault. Like I was like to like do this. So like the rehearsal time is like almost like a sacred time for like the yeah. artists to be able to like look at their performance. Yeah. I mean, like we were even told we're not allowed to film inside inside there. Wild. Even on wrong rehearsals. Um so they're very strict about that, but I guess it's for I don't actually know because they do put out pictures anyway from the rehearsals. Yeah. Like it is seen. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they're very strict. They're very strict, but there are a lot of rehearsals. Mm. There's a lot. Like you do that, you do it over and over and over, which is great. Then you know you're getting it right. Yeah, you're getting it right. It was very fun. It was very, um, it wasn't strange. It was, maybe it was strange coming back into doing like full sets of, of shows. Right. Um, after Eurovision, because I had just been doing that song, mm-hmm. like for months, you know? So I was like, whoa, can I even still do a whole set? <laughs> like, yeah, but it was a bit daunting. Do you feel like the process of Eurovision, because obviously I think you've done Mighty Hoopla, like mm-hmm. download, like that sort of boost has brought you extra new fans? Oh, definitely. The fans are... I love them. I love them. I love them. There's so many. They're like, I love mostly that the young ones, like I think it's, I, I never expected to have teenage, like teenage and like mm. kids be fans of my stuff because a lot of it's like explicit, you know, like yeah. a lot of my songs. Um, but I guess it does offer that like fantasy world that you love growing up, you know. So I love that. I mean, they're drawing fan art. Their fan art's in crazy. Oh, you you repost quite a lot of I fan art. I repost every single fan art because Love that. like obviously some are like insane mm. and <laughs> some are really cute. <laughs> um but I think like if somebody's putting effort into, you know, drawing me and, and tagging me, I'm like, yeah, go off. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna show that I'm gonna share this. Like I think it's so it's so wholesome and also I'm in some group chats with my fans. Like, I physically can't leave. I tried to, and they keep adding me. And then I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm just going to stay here. And now I'm glad that I stayed in it because I get to see them all being, like, so supportive and so kind to each other and, like, mm. giving each other advice. And, like, loads of them are going to meet up and be friends at, at the London show wow. and, like, different shows around uh, the headline tour. And, yeah, I'm just super proud that it's, like, such a kind group. You know, like, I, they just seem to... They're always coming for anyone who misgenders me all the time, which is great. I no longer have to do that. Mm. They're always coming back at people's nasty comments with love. And I'm like, you're the best. I don't know. I'm proud of I'm proud of um collecting that that little coven. It's cute. I think but I think that like sort of speaks to you as well, because again, I can only relate this to my sort of drag race experience, but like I find people who sort of support me approach other people with kindness. Mm. Now, people who support other queens from Drag Race are often very nasty. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's down to, like, you as an individual who sort of, like, uh, I guess, like, preached that message and they've listened to it. Yeah. So give yourself a pat on the back as well. I would, but I don't have... Uh, my hands are stuck. <laughs> not, not right now. <laughs> maybe later. <laughs> no, but it is, it is great. Have you found, like, the wider Eurovision fandom has been supportive in that way or are there some shady bitches no I think that they're I think all the Eurovision fans have been really nice to be honest they like it's more so people who stumble across my reels where I'm like in costume um and 
just like they'll run, it'll come up on their page randomly and they're like super Christian or something and they're like, this is Satan. Or like, you know, it's usually people who don't really know. Yeah. Or haven't even tried to get to know that give the abuse. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're always going to get hate, especially if you're doing something correct <laughs> <laughs> or impactful, you know. So I'm, I think, I think as as a as a an alternative artist and also as a as a queer person, like I'm already used to that kind of shit, you know. Exactly, so yeah. it's just another thing to add on to being like, send you love and kindness for your nastiness again on another facet of me. So I don't know, like. The internet brings out the trolls, doesn't it? So you just have to put up with them. You know there's just somebody behind a computer. You know that they probably would never say anything like that to you in real life. They're just bored. Yeah, I've had people leave nasty comments that I reply to something kind and they're like, oh, sorry, I just wanted your attention. And I'm mm -hmm. like, get it in a different way. Yeah. Don't be nasty. You don't be coming spreading some hate here. Say something nice. Yeah. Do you know, I found recently my, it's not my TikTok, it's only my Instagram Reels algorithm. Mm -hmm. So I've got loads of like quite like religious Christian Reels yeah. and stuff. And like a lot of people are experiencing this. And I'm like, how has this happened? Do well, you mean Pride you are month? seeing them? Yeah, I'll like yeah. scroll. It'll be like Happy Pride Month. And then the next one will be like, yo, Ottawa, it's me, your teen minister. We're having a, Slay meeting on Saturday. That's a very specific one of this like teen minister who does like a high kick. It's weird. Maybe the algorithm, maybe there's somebody behind being like, we must push Catholicism on to everybody again. It's fading. Make it look cool for the kids. <laughs> it, it, but it is very that. But like some of them as well, there's like this weird specific niche that is taking contemporary music and making it... Oh, God. Yeah, so there's this one that I keep getting constantly, which is Espresso. It's like this girl being like, I'm working late because I am holy. Like, it's very awkward. Oh. But I do, actually, it's my own fault because I'm like, I wonder what the lyrics are, so I actually, like, sit and listen to them. Do you, Have they done the whole song into... into Some of them do. Okay. Some of them... Do there's this one that I keep getting as well who's like, you can't be a Christian rapper, but why is this a bop? And then it's his own song that's like, yeah, gonna pray to the <laughs> Lord. And it's it's not good, but I'm like, do you know what? You're like, yeah. You work, like, it's like. He believes it. He does. I mm. think I've liked some of them because I'm like, you you actually ate that. Yeah. I Actually, there is one, there's one girl who's been showing up on mine recently and she's a 21-year-old Catholic wife, she just, she's, I think she's uh, autistic and she shares her story. Yeah. She's super sweet. I actually love her videos. She dresses quite like Handmaid's Tale and just like cooks. I think and I know like, the one you mean, yeah. Yeah, I like her. I vibe her actually. Um, some of them are just very calming. <laughs> yeah, I'm some like, of them are calming and mm. some of them are concerning. Yes. Yeah. Very worrying. Mm. But it's just the weird way that the algorithm works. Because, sorry, that came to me because you were saying how, like, those religious people are seeing your reels and stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, how are these things getting fed to people? Like, what in the algorithm is going on here? Yeah, I mean, the reel that keeps getting shown to them of mine mostly is the one where I'm in a condom wrapper and I look like I'm on crack. <laughs> and I'm and it's the sound is like, she's not a Christian! <laughs> and they're like, don't come here talking about God. Like, don't use God's name in vain, yeah, sending me Bible verses. I'm like, Slay. Yeah. <laughs> Work. Thank you for sharing. They're like, I'm praying for you. I'm like, thank you for having me in your prayers. <laughs> but also, I think the key thing to remember, I always think this at Pride, because you always get like Christian protesters at Pride. And like, I always think, do you know what? It's not what I believe, but mm. these people think they're doing the best thing for you. Mm. So someone saying like, I'll pray for you. It's kind of, Slay, because it's like, you believe that is the best thing for me. Oh, yeah. It's a kind action, even if it's not what you agree with. No, definitely. I mean, like, I have my, um, there's an old lady who used to be my nanny growing up who um, lives in the town that I grew up in still. And she lights a candle for me and prays for me every night. Oh. But I've recently, I gave her some crystals. So now she's put those, she holds them when she says her prayers and she's trying to understand a bit more of pagan stuff. But, um, like, I love that. Like, yeah. I also went to a Catholic school. Like, I think, like, it's the institutions that are bad, really. Not, like, mm. not... Obviously, some of the teachings are terrible in the, in the book, but, like, 
I don't even think everyone reads the whole book that oh, no. practices. And I think you you can't tarnish everyone with the same brush. Obviously, you have like really devout of any religion who can be super nasty and uh, spreading hate. But mm-hmm. you can also have someone of no faith doing that too. And also vice versa. You can also have someone who is practicing by the book who actually is a good human mm. and not a homophobe or a transphobe, but still believes in Christ. So like, it's a spectrum of, of everything, I guess. We just get the crazy trolls because hateful people want to be loud, I guess. That is true. And they do tend to shout the loudest. Yeah. I will also, I'm going to say for anyone listening or watching at home, I realize we've just had a big chat about religion. And I'm wearing a big cross. And you're wearing a big cross. <laughs> But also, technically, isn't that also fandoms? Like, Christianity yeah. is just Jesus' biggest fandom. Yeah. So it's still relevant to the podcast. Jesus is the biggest superstar that has ever been. Ever. That's kind of tea, actually. Yeah. Wow. Well, wow, well, Jesus. That really makes you think. The musical Jesus Christ Superstar. Real. Um, question. Mm. Did you train in musical theatre or did I invent this? No, I did. I went to Ardang. Work. My friend, um, now called Ember, formerly called Poppycock, I think was a few years below you. Okay. Yeah. Because we were watching, the, they were texting me during the semifinals, and they were like, oh, the dancing demon, they trained at Erdang, and yeah. then they realized that you both did. So I kind of, sorry, relevant, because I feel like it's nice that you've like brought people with you on this journey. Oh, yeah. I mean, Matt is was the first person I met when I was even auditioning for Erdang. Like, wow. he was the first person I met. I remember we were like, did the thing, did the dance, and then went out for a cigarette. And I was like, yeah, this guy's cool. <laughs> um, at the time, he was only ever wearing, he would only dress in Vivian Westwood, like, I all can't. the time. Like, would get changed from dance um, class for a five-minute walk to the other building, right back into, just for the walk, into the Vivian Westwood. Work. He was quite iconic, yeah, in, in uni. I was chaotic. So was he, actually. But, yeah, we've known each other for, like, 12 years. Wow. So it's really special to have him on this journey with me and also share that stage with him and continue. Like, he's coming on tour with me. He's my choreographer. Love. You know, so he's known me through all my phases, all my names, like, every part of me. And that's really special, I think, as well, when you're kind of coming up as well and getting mm-hmm. more well-known. Like, just to have people who've been there from the get-go, really. Yeah. Who I trust completely and adore. So, it's really nice. It's, yeah, that's like almost like a home comfort that you have with you mm. on all these shows and all these things that you're doing. Yeah. Just, yeah, just to have that person who's like been part of you for a long time. That's nice. Mm. I get scared getting on planes on my own. Do you? Yeah, I hate it. I just hate going places by myself. So, like, the idea of, like, having someone with you who you're close to, Mm. that's really nice. Do you fall asleep on planes? I try to. Okay. But I spend most of the time being like, oh, my God. The reason why I'm thinking about this is because I'm literally getting on a plane on Friday and then another one on Sunday. Oh, wait a second, you're going to LA? Yes, going Uh, to Canada first and then to LA. Oh, yes, I'm in LA too, as I told you. We're there at the same time. Next week, huh? Oh, you tell me if you want to come to DragCon. I would love to come to DragCon. Okay, I'll, I'll get you the passes. <laughs> that's sick. Yeah, we'll make it that. happen. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. And now I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. Sponsored by Chumba Casino. No purchase necessary. VGW Group. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. Right, let's talk about stuff that you love. Yeah. This is like predominantly, we're talking TV, we're Mm -hmm. talking film. Like what did you grow up on? What are you watching now? Oh, what did I grow up on? Um, A lot of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Love. A lot of Keenan and Kel. A lot of Sister Sister. A lot of Tom and Jerry. A lot of Powerpuff Girls. Love. Um, This is all talking my language. A lot of Saw. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, That's where we differ. Like a lot of recess, a lot of like... Love. Uh, Nickelodeon kind of things. Disney, I was an absolute Disney freak growing up as well. Really? All of like Little Mermaid, Little Mermaid 2, Cinderella, Cinderella 2, Pocahontas, Pocahontas 2, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, I, Black Cauldron. I didn't even know there was a second Pocahontas or... Yeah, real. Like, That's, yeah. I was obsessed. Hmm. Work. How, do you feel like any of that sort of like Disneyfication feeds into like what you do now? 100%. 100%. I mean, definitely like the, the Disney villains I love. Oh, uh, yes. Okay, that makes um, sense. But also just the kind of fantasy elements of it, I guess. Mm. You know, like have you, the Black Cauldron is kind of a niche Disney movie. It's kind of giving Lord of the Rings. It's like this pig who sees into the future in this bowl and there's like this horned king who looks terrifying and there's no music in the movie. It's really scary. That horned king, that's a bit of me. Okay, wow. Well, goth man. Um, I might have to watch it. It's pretty good. Okay. It's pretty good. Um, there was a lot of Disney growing up, not gonna lie. That, see, I wouldn't have seen that coming, but now you pointed out the villains aspect. I'm like, yeah, I see it. Yeah, but even the princesses and the prince aspect, like I loved all of them. Like I could, Hercules Work. was my favorite and Hunchback of Notre Dame. I loved how it was kind of like real. Like she was shallow. Gritty. She, she picked the hot soldier mm -hmm. over the hunchback. <laughs> I was like, that's cutting, but she's real. Yeah, she's a real shallow lady. <laughs> um, like who I love. Food's alive. Um, yeah, I don't know. Recently, I rinsed, I was sick for like two weeks and I rinsed The Handmaid's Tale season one to season five. No, don't, because it's getting too real. Yeah. It's getting too real. No, I literally was watching it. I was like, wait, could this become, is this becoming this? Oh, no, scary. Um... It's weird when those things like are meant to serve as a warning and be like, don't ever do this. And then like you suddenly realize that we are living in our own dystopian future and yeah. it's a bit hideous. Yeah. Like Roe versus Wade. Okay. Very that. One more step closer to the Handmaid's Tale. Scary. Literally. Um, but I think incredible, incredible TV show. Mm. Um, the protagonist really annoys me. <laughs> like I love it but she has so many chances to get away and just is addicted to the pain. Which I find weirdly relatable. Yeah, real, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I try to go away, but I can't. I'm, I love horrors, though. I see that. Um, but I love... Um, one of my favorite movies is Sigourney Weaver, Alien, because nobody makes monsters mm -hmm. or creatures like they used to. Okay, fair. Like that's like a that's like a human in a in a in a suit. Yeah, that was just like a very you know? lanky person moving and, uh, around. It's terrifying and believable and better than CGI. Yeah, because it's actually like in camera happening in the moment. Yeah, love love anything that's like otherworldly. Watched Martian recently. Is the that... Martian with um, Hawkeye. Yeah, I was literally about to say, isn't that the one with Matt the... Damon? Is that him? Is it Matt Damon? It might be Matt Damon. It might be. I don't know why I looked at you being like, <laughs> could you Google this? You That's not him. your responsibility. Um, <laughs> I think it might be. It's someone in that like Matt Damon, Mark Wahlberg-esque world. Oh, it could be it him. It is Matt Damon. Okay. It is Matt Damon. Confirmed. Okay. Thank you. Um, you went above and beyond in that moment. I just didn't mean to make <laughs> eye contact. Um, signs. I used to love. I used to Creepy. love Creepy, yeah. I used to love that. I used to love... Uh, War of the Worlds, I always wanted to play. I always wanted to be Dakota Fanning. I wanted to play that part. Work. Really wanted to be hiding under the table. There's still time. Yeah. If they made it into a stage a musical, <laughs> that's, that could happen. <laughs> yeah, real. So, okay, it feels like you're like big on the alien tropes. I do. I See, I love a zombie. Oh, no. What? No. no. Zombie is my least favorite. <gasps> like, I don't mind them, but I'm like... Why are you running? Or like, why, why, I don't know. I don't know. There's something, I prefer creatures I don't see. Okay. Or aliens. So like a quiet place kind of vibe. Oh, yeah. You want the like... I want the jump scares. I want the adrenaline. Oh. I don't want to see a human being... <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like you get that with... I just love a zombie. I don't know why. What's your favorite zombie? 
Honestly, I think it is the... I can't say but I'm going to say beep it. Um, it's the like 28 days later, like they are like getting you no matter what. They can run at pace. Okay. Kind of like zombie vibe. Like Silent Hilly. I don't like a slow, like the kind of classic, like... You want the zombies that run yeah. at speed. I want no escape. I want like the same thing in Doctor Who. I want the Daleks to be able to float up the stairs. Real, like, real. Because then they've got, to, they've got to be a bit more like ingenuitive. Mm. I think that is the correct word, to like get themselves out of the situation. Is like there a... one with... Um... Is there one with Will Smith who says the zombies? No, because now all I can think of is Independence Day. Okay. Mm. I am legend. legend. Is that zombies? Yeah, okay, I do like uh, that. Okay, work. Well, that one. Also, have you seen Midnight Gospel? No. Oh my God, amazing. Um, that is my homework this evening. Yeah, Midnight Gospel, Duncan Trussell. Um, it's on Netflix, but it's kind of like a podcast meets cartoon. Oh, okay. But, and it doesn't really, like the what they're saying doesn't make sense to the story on the screen. It's like quite good for NeuroSpicy. Okay, well, <laughs> um, but I feel seen. <laughs> there's one where it's zombies and they're healing the zombies with this um, needle. But when they become a zombie, in the zombie realm, from their perspective, it's all like, la, la, la. And they're like having the best time ever. And it's all colorful, like they're tripping on acid. Oh. And then they get, with the shot, they're pulled back into the real world, which is like kind of dull and gray, but at the same time, even in their zombie land to the real world people, they look like zombies and they're after them and they're trying to bite them. But oh. Really, they're trying to bite them to bring them into like utopia. It's quite cool. Oh, it's a cartoon. That's weird. Yeah, it's good though. I like it. That is good. That reminds me of my good friend Theresa May, who was on Drag Race, has a music video mm. where they are the devil, but like camp because drag. Yeah, gorge. Um, and there's like this family and the whole story of the music video is like the boy thinks that he's like hitting these piñatas and like candy falls out, but he's actually murdering his family and it's oh. like their blood and guts. So like the devil's like enchanted him. Hey, I love and, like, that. And like similar vibe. Yeah, very similar vibe. I, I feel, quite like that. I feel like that should be, that's your homework. Please watch Theresa yeah. May's uh, Welcome, what's it called? Party in Hell? Yeah. Okay, Theresa May. Fun. Mm. Okay. We love a zombie. You love an alien. Mm. Do you have like a favorite like alien film specifically, or is it just the whole genre? Like you mentioned, signs and stuff like that. Is there like one that stands out? Alien. That's the one. That's the film. That's the pinnacle. Yeah, that's the pinnacle. I swear, if Poppy, if you choose that as the script, and I'm just making alien noises, I will. I will. <laughs> I might be okay with that. Actually. Or do signs. We'll both make alien noises. Just pick the piece where they're like in the field. <laughs> Just the aliens, and we'll be like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, can I make I, this I'm kind of? <laughs> You're very good at that. Thanks. <laughs> that's, like, that's quite an unusual skill. But I'm like, I didn't see that coming. Um, is have... Lord of the Rings sci-fi? No, it's fantasy. I feel like fantasy can like enter this realm. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Do you love a Lord of the Rings I, moment? Yeah. Why? Wow. I love Gollum. Okay, fears. Gollum is like my doppelganger, honestly. Like, if I, <laughs> if I was bald, it would be... That's the moment. Yeah, you'd be like, what are you doing? Do a whole bald, bald cat prosthetic. I actually did that from... I had a Halloween show and I pulled off my wig to a bald cap. Wow. It's gorge. And then I bled. From the bald cap? No. Just generally... No, from down low. Oh, <laughs> slow. Slow. Um, yeah, love that. But that's not sci-fi. But we we enter the fantasy realm. I mean, I yeah. think the thing about Lord of the Rings is that my theory about fantasy is it's just like sci-fi, but like from a different time. So it's like yeah, like Lord medieval of the Rings. Yeah. sci-fi. It's just that. Like, what is Middle Earth if not a parallel dimension? <laughs> yeah, real. Like, are dragons not like sci-fi lizards? Well, maybe it's be is is sci-fi kind of like it could actually and fantasy is like maybe it, like because aliens could could. Probably, most likely. Is sci-fi just fantasy with computers? Maybe. Yeah. What is Doctor Who? Time, space, travel. Sci-fi. Yeah, but kind of like there's fantasy elements to it. The one with the... I haven't seen much Doctor Who, but I remember the one with the angels. <gasps> the weeping angels. Yeah, that was a bit spooky, so I enjoyed that one. Oh, like the original 
episode of Blink, mm -hmm. like The Weeping Angels, iconic, but they come back and there's like a few more episodes, which I think you'd enjoy for that reason. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I love them. Oh, oh I do creepy. see The Weeping Angels for you. Yeah. I'm more of like a Dalek That's type energy. Like a, me, me, me. <laughs> Is it like the Star Wars y beepy guy? Yeah, like a really evil R2D2. Like a mm. like a scary, like extremely right wing R2D2. Okay. Okay, work. Dalek. Yeah, real. This Sorry, it's because I'm I feel, I feel like do we even have Doctor Did we have Doctor Who in Ireland? It came back in 2005, so... I don't depending. know if they showed it lots to us over there. Oh. They're like, not for you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, does Ireland have, like, any specific shows that are... Um, we used to have, uh, I guess, like, the Moorbegs. It's like these, like, two really um, fluffy, hairy creatures. Okay, work. Um, and we had Dustin, the turkey... Don't. Dustin's who, an icon. Yeah, but he really had his own telly show first. Before the Eurovision yeah. moment. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he had like Dustin's Daily News. And like, I was on Dustin's Daily News Star Search when I was like 12. So he's been around. Roll the clip. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but so you had like... We had like Home involved. and Away shown every day. I mean, could be sci-fi because some of those storylines were not real. Yeah. That is true. I did love a bit of Home and Away and Neighbours. I loved Interstellar, actually, because I loved Ooh. how that went through, like, time and, like, going through different dimensions and the time stops to really mean what it means outside of Earth. Mm. And I loved it's giving science. the book. Yeah, it's giving science. Yeah. It's giving really good at science. Yeah. <laughs> it's giving, like, <laughs> physics A-level. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I loved that he was the ghost. You know, like yeah. moving the books through time. That's I. I mean, we just love a good plot twist. Mm. That's the thing. Like when you don't see it coming. Yeah. I remember, like originally, like before everyone knew the plot twist in the Sixth Sense. Before everyone needed a plot twist. No, before like you know, in the Sixth Sense, like the gag is, like he was dead the whole oh, time. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like before you knew that, watching that film was like, like mm. I clutched my imaginary pearls. Mm. I was like, gag. I didn't mm. see that coming. But now everyone knows that you rewatch it and you're like... Yeah, it's kind of like you never... Yeah, Fight Club's another one, which I'm like... Mm. I wish I never saw so I could see it again for the first time. Yeah. Or yeah. Inception as well. Oh, See, I still don't think I understand Inception. <laughs> like, I've watched it multiple times and I'm like, but how do you know? It's spinning. Does that mean that it's real? What's going on? I just don't understand it. Yeah, I think they want you to be like that, though. In like, oh, that's is he awake or is he still asleep? Yeah, I'm bad at that. It's kind of Matrixy as well, I guess. I love the Matrix. Love, love the Matrix. Even the last one, which people the mo the more recent one that people didn't love, I still loved it. I don't know if I saw the very most recent one actually. Like new vibes, new energy. Completely. Very much more diverse. Even okay. though the actual Matrix film, films were very diverse. Okay. Um, yeah, I just love their style as well. Yeah, well, their styling. Shiny black outfits. <laughs> I see it. Um, on that note, Poppy, producer Poppy, the fan favourite who is producer Poppy, is lurking with the laptop because Poppy has chosen a scene for us. Poppy, oh. please enter frame and let us know what we are spontaneously performing. Oh. War of the Worlds. Yeah. Do you want to do Ray and then I'll okay. do Rachel's one line and then also Robbie? Okay. I, we have no context for this. Yeah. And also... Do we have to do it? We should have to do it in a strange voice. Okay, what? Well, should we, we do it in an alien voice instead? I don't think so. No. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. That, that was giving uh, slightly Gollum adjacent. Should we pick an accent? Oh, my God. Um, yeah. I am um, horrible at accents. I can probably do, like, sod, like bad Southern... Like Southern American, yeah, like, like okay. Vintage Southern. Well, you I do the okay, let's give it a go. Yeah, I yeah. have no idea if I can do this, but let's see. <laughs> I'm so scared. Wait, so we're sprinting, we're out of okay, breath. Okay, okay, wait. <sighs> Robbie! Get back here! Robbie, no! Robbie, come back! Robbie! For God's sake! <laughs> Robbie! Stay here, I'm coming! Good. Oh, Robbie! <laughs> Robbie! It's just gonna be Robbie. <laughs> Why? Why are you doing this? Listen to me! Turn around! Listen to me! 
Don't do this, I love you. I need to be here. I need to see this. I know it seems like you have to, but you don't. You let me go. You don't. Please, let me go. I'm not letting you do this. You can hate me. You can hate me, but I love you. Let me go, please. <laughs> I'm not letting you do this. And What see. happened? Where are the aliens? Okay, here come the aliens. <laughs> Robbie, I'm being... <laughs> no, <laughs> don't. <laughs> and scene. Um, I wish we were in signs. <laughs> we could be. <laughs> Maybe that's that's where this becomes an expanded universe. Yeah, real. I want like uh, like a fan, what are they called fan fiction of us in signs. <laughs> Someone's gonna write it yeah. now that we've said it. Just, I want to just be in the cornfield, living life. Yeah. I think I think I want to be at a full sprint running from aliens. Okay, so you can be in the full sprint, and I'll be the alien. Okay, can I change shoes before the full sprint? No. Okay. <laughs> this, may, this will be a very short scene. Yeah, real. You better be so fast at running because aliens can I'm, fly. I'm quite, I actually am quite fast. Yeah. I think it's the height. Um, we, this is the end of the podcast. Slay. Can't lie, but we've spoken nothing about what you're doing in life and what's coming up. Well, but we should now. Just about to go and be in the new signs, really. That's the whole thing. Um, <laughs> no, I've got my headline tour coming up. Amazing. Which is amazing. I Coming up, I'm going to be able to get out of this cross and not sweat my tits off anymore. Um, <laughs> Me under here. Real. Um, yeah, I got my headline tour coming up. I'm doing Cork Pride, Love. which is sweet because it's Cork City. It's where mm -hmm. I'm from. So I'm really excited actually to do that. Um, and yeah, I'm just prepping for tour. I've got some festivals as well still coming up. And then... I need to sleep after tour. Tour finishes in November. It starts in uh, Ooh, okay. August. But then I've got new music coming out as well. Actually. <gasps> Exciting. Got a new song. Heck so heavy. Coming. It's a diss track. Coming now? It's coming at the end of August. Okay, let me do maths. Because obviously this is present day for you, but not for us. It's coming when, out at the beginning, soon. Beginning of August or end of August? <gasps> end. End. It will be out in a few weeks. Yeah, Based uh, on my maths. I get, uh, coming to... I don't fucking know. Coming <laughs> out soon. <laughs> Available where all good music is downloaded, purchased and streamed. Real. Very that. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. That's all right. Um, usually this ends more awkwardly, but we concluded it, so I'm going to keep talking so the end of the podcast is awkward. Okay. What about um, I like just slowly disappear? Okay, that... <laughs> Slay, that's the end.